Welcome to this educational presentation on ependymoma and the activities of CERN. I'm pleased to be joined by a group of CERN investigators today. Dr. Aldapi, I'd like to lead this discussion about classification and types of ependymomas. Can you start out the discussion for us today? Um, yes, thank you, Terry. The, the pathologist plays an important role in the diagnosis of an, of an ependymoma. After the surgeon biopsies or resects the tumor, the pathologist makes the diagnosis. Um, an, an ependymoma uh, is, uh, is, is a rare tumor, and as such, it's important that it is diagnosed by an experienced neuropathologist. Uh, it, it, brain tumors have characteristics that are different from tumors outside the nervous system. So that's why it's very important that, we, um, that, that the tumor be diagnosed by someone who sees uh, these uh, tumors routinely. Now, pneumomas have certain characteristics that distinguish themselves from other brain tumors. And it's very important to make sure to exclude other brain tumors because they are treated very differently. So an pneumoma has a, a variety of histologic features that, that are uh, examined by the neuropathologist and they're put together into a si single diagnosis. The, the tumors have some variants and m most of those variants um, have to do more with how they look rather than how they behave clinically. There is one variant, that, that's the, the myxopapillary pneumoma, which does behave more, uh, more indolently, less, less aggressively. However, the, the other variants really are, are more um, morphologic patterns rather than uh, clinically important uh, variants. The tumors are graded by the World Health Organization criteria into two grades, generally, a grade two and a grade three. Uh, those uh, pathologic features are, in, include the proliferative rate of the tumor, if the tumor outgrows its blood supply, and if the tumor uh, is, uh, is growing a lot of blood vessels, uh, what we call angiogenesis. However, um, the, the grading criteria, although they are um, codified in the uh, World Health Organization guidelines, um, it, it is difficult to apply on an individual case um, to really be able to predict the, the outcomes of, of these patients. And that's where the, the CERN Foundation uh, uh, becomes important, and that's where, uh, where we can go beyond morphologic classification. And Dr. Gilbertson might have some comments about, uh, about moving beyond pathologic classification and looking at the, the, uh, how the pendulum is varied by the site, by the location of the tumor. Sure, thanks, Ken. So as Ken's mentioned, the pathologist plays a really important role in actually making the diagnosis, and that's based on how a tumor looks down the microscope. But in fact, what's interesting about a pneumoma, what makes CERN so important is that we can see in children and adults very similar looking tumors and they vary in their behavior depending on where they occur in the nervous system. So spinal tumors actually behave relatively non-aggressively and have a good survival chance generally, whereas those in the brain tend to be more aggressive. And so what we've been interested in is actually looking beyond how a tumor simply looks down the microscope at the patterns of genes that you see expressed in a tumor. And we have technologies available to us now, thanks again to the generous you know, um, support of CERN, which allow us to look literally at thousands of genes in an individual tumor. And that can allow us to create a fingerprint for each individual tumor, just like a fingerprint will recognize an individual. What's remarkable is when you do that, you can recognize that these tumors have site-specific fingerprints in terms of their gene expression. And so that tells us that there's something unique about where these tumors appear in the nervous system. And so going beyond that, what we're starting to look at is the connection between normal development and tumor development and how the normal developmental process goes wrong to make a tumor. And the reason that's critical is at the heart of that is likely to be answers to new therapies. Because if we can understand how something goes wrong to make a tumor, we can start to design new treatments which will prevent that process, either stop it from going further or even reverse the process by blocking those particular abnormal signals that are making a tumor happen. And so the interaction between the pathologists and the biologists like myself in the lab and the clinicians is a really fun part of CERN where normally you'll get one of these individuals working on a disease on their own. But part of this collaboration allows us to work with Ken, in the patho with the pathologists, with ourselves in the lab, and then with the clinicians to really start to share this information and put it into practice so that we can take it rapidly into the clinic. I think Dr. Gilbertson's work um, really highlights the importance of using uh, tumor tissue from patients with a pneumoma to go beyond morphologic pathologic classification. So with this tissue, we can um, identify um, some of the molecular subtypes that might have direct uh, treatment implications. 
Uh, so I think this, this really is a, a very important aspect of the CERN Foundation um, to be able to have a forum to collect these tumor tissues so that we can um, improve outcomes of patients with these diseases. So uh, let me just add a, a couple of comments and, and just emphasize some of the important points that both of you have made. I think the first point, Ken, is, is that you pointed out is how important it is to make a correct diagnosis. And um, it has been reported in the, in the medical literature that up to 30% of ependymomas are misdiagnosed. And so I would in, encourage people to consider getting an expert opinion from a very seasoned neuropathologist. We're very fortunate and concerned to have some of the top neuropathologists in the world working on ependymoma. And the other point of emphasis is that our discovery, our knowledge, our ability to really individualize therapy is going to be based on uh, on the work that that many of the CERN investigators are doing based on, on patient tumor material. And so I, I want people to really um, consider that, you know, and, and participate um, in studies and, and be willing to have tumor tissue evaluated in, in laboratory types of investigations because that's clearly going to accelerate not only our knowledge but our, our ability to translate that knowledge into better treatments. Yeah, that's, that's a really important point because this disease is rare and as Mark said, one or two patients might be seen by a physician per year. And so there's, the, the issue is, is that we need to collect all of this material together. And we've been able to do that successfully through the CERN. It's only when you bring the strength of those numbers together that you start to see the patterns that we need to advance patient therapy. Well, thank you all for this general dis discussion of the diagnosis of ependymoma and the efforts of CERN. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.